Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this Linux tutorial video I'll be showing you how to verify the checksum of a Linux ISO file. When you look at the download section of various Linux distributions, they will often show you a checksum you can use to verify the integrity of the file which you have just downloaded. For example on Linux Lite they show an MD5 sum, Arch Linux has both an MD5 and a SHA-1, and Ubuntu has the MD5, SHA-1 and SHA-256. That is a very long hexadecimal number, which is more likely to be unique under SHA-256, but for the purposes of file integrity check-in, yeah, you can also use MD5 and SHA-1. I won't cover how the sum is calculated, but the result will be the same on whatever system or application you use to check. So I've downloaded a 1.3 gigabyte ISO of Linux Lite, and I'll show you a few different methods you can use to verify the sum. So I'll change directory into the downloads folder, and the commands we have available, there's md5sum, sha1sum, and sha256sum. Use whichever one is applicable to the checksum you have available to you. So in the case of Linux Lite, all I have is an md5sum. So type in md5sum, space, and I can't remember the file off the top of my head. So press tab to give me a list of them, and there it is there on the top right hand side, called linux Lite etc. And again, I can't be bothered to type all that in. What I'll do is just start typing it and press tab to get value completed for you. So after a couple of seconds, I have a result here. So does that match what I have? Uh, yeah, this is a, a good way of checking. So, so yeah, so we can check by holding the two programs next to each other, or since I have partial transparency, I can hold them over each other. So yeah, it starts F4FF and ends in 18EC. F4FF ending 18EC. I don't have to check every single value there. Basically, you'll know pretty quickly if you have a corrupt file because it will be completely different. It won't just be off by one letter, or it would be pretty unlikely to be off by one letter. It will more likely be completely different. And if it is completely different, then you'll need to re download the file. So that is one option. Another option is you can use OpenSSL. Type in the hash type you're looking for, so md5, sha1, or sha256. And I'll show you a different trick here. So what I could do is take the file here in the GUI file manager, drag and drop it into the terminal. KDE provides me the option of pasting the location, which is exactly what I want. Now back to terminal, press enter. Oh, I forgot to put a space in. How careless of me. So anyway, I will get OpenSSL to calculate the value for me. And what I'll see is that looks pretty similar to what I saw earlier. Yes, excellent. Now Linux Lite do have this very nice feature here of an MD5 sum checker. This is the only distribution I know of that has this feature. What I'll do is I'll go back to my file manager, drag and drop the file there. And after a few seconds, quite a few seconds, we have the MD5 sum returned for me. So I'm just waffling while I wait for it. There it is. And we can just stretch them across one screen and see they are very much similar. The first two options did require a little bit of typing, but what if you're the sort of person who wants to use a graphical user interface, a GUI application? Well, we have that option available to us with an application called GTK Hash. The default view is for text, so typing in the text string gives me all these different hash values. Very nice, but I'm not interested in text. And if you go into preferences, you can choose the different hashes you have displayed here on the screen. So I don't really need CRC32, so I'm gonna disable that one. But I want the file view, so go across to view and select file. The file I'm looking for, which is in my downloads folder, so that's Linux Lite. And I do have the option of providing a checksum here. So why not? Back to the web page. Use the checksum I have available. Paste that in there and press the hash button. And there we are, I have a little tick showing a valid hash. So I don't have to bother actually reading the hash. I just need to provide it, get the program to check it for me. So job done. I've only had a Linux ISO file become corrupt on me a couple of times, which is fairly good going given that I've been using Linux for about nine years now and downloaded quite a few different Linux distributions. It's one of these things that does happen from time to time, and whilst you don't necessarily have to verify the image of every single file that you have, 
you'll probably notice more obvious effects like something not working properly during the install or upon reboot. And that is a few of the options available for verifying the checksum of a Linux ISO file. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.